The opening races of the season have already dramatically shown the difference made by the absence of traction control. With the cars looking more spectacular on the track and occasionally finding themselves off it in the search for the ultimate lap time. For Panasonic Toyota Racing, the new era is a welcome change. Well, certainly it's given us more exciting racing. And I think uh, anything that puts the control of the car back into the hands of the driver has to be positive in terms of the spectator. And that's, you know, we've seen that already, and I think it's a very positive thing. Trying to control that much horsepower and a car which is quite delicate without traction control puts a lot more back in the hands of the drivers. But, you know, these are professionals. They're well-paid professionals. They go out there with a passion to win. and You know, they, they have to show what they, they can do without traction control. There's been a lot of discussion about it, but my personal view is get out there, drive the car, show what you can do. It's about your talent as a driver. This new emphasis on driver skills is clear when you compare last year's steering wheel, filled with traction and other control dials, with this year's simple layout. Across the board, Panasonic Toyota Racing has been busy finding ways to adapt to racing without traction control. Well, the ban of the so-called driver aids from this year has changed the approach of the teams and of the drivers uh, in certain areas of the development, setup and driving. The development of the car has to, of course, cope with this new challenge of having a car which is well balanced in corner exit when you go on throttle, when you go on power, so that traction is still there even without traction control. The next race in Bahrain puts a special emphasis on traction. It's an unusual combination of specially formulated high grip surfaces and an unpredictable local commodity, sand. But we need to be very careful with the handling characteristic of the car, uh, particularly in Bahrain with uh, a sandy circuit. Overnight the wind can blow in the sand, so usually the track, which may start off as a green track, gets rubbered in through the, through the weekend, but with Bahrain you can get sand blown over the rubber. With that, the loss of traction control, and obviously the cars are more prone to wheel spin, and we need to be sure that we provide a more stable aerodynamic car just to counter any unstable introduction with, without the TC. So, a potentially sandy Sakia circuit and no traction control to help the drivers. What's Jano Trulli's take on the Bahrain Grand Prix? The main topic there is obviously braking, braking stability and the, the brakes itself because uh, we have very long straights so we need top speed as well as a good uh, braking stability because uh, there are a lot of uh, hard braking after uh, long straights. So the brakes, as I say, they are really under stress with a very high temperature. I don't found uh, the track extremely technical, but still to be quick there you need to, to find out some uh, good setup and good, uh, good line in order to get the best out of uh, what you have. Jano Trulli and his teammate Timo Glock have come to Formula One from other race series which don't use electronic driver aids. So both drivers are comfortable with the new regulations. With traction control you can go even more to the limit of the car and um, I think it's the right way to go uh, to drive without traction control to bring a bit more control to the driver and um, that makes it interesting. And my motorsport career was every time without traction control so uh, for me it wasn't a problem to, to get used to it, um, I think it's the right way to go and it's good for the fans to see some black marks on the track again. With the Bahrain race coming up fast, Panasonic Toyota Racing welcomes the challenge of Formula One's only Desert Grand Prix.